As I look back on the last 19 years of ministry and service as a United Methodist pastor, I'm amazed how much I've changed and grown, for which I'm humbled and blessed that God has done these works in me. But I think for me, the greatest joy that I've had in ministry as far as seeing restoration is looking and observing and watching pastors and disciples and churches grow and be transformed by God's transforming power as God continues to mold them and shape them into the disciples and churches that God is still creating them and calling them to be. I give thanks to God for those things. And so I think that's where I really see restoration. I know that I'll continue to be restored as I continue in ministry into the future. And I'll give thanks to God for that as I continue in this journey of ministry as well. First is, uh, even though we're blessed to be on the journey of ministry and God called us on that journey, uh, there will probably be difficult times. And you might even come to a time where uh, you say, I'm done, and might even walk away from the ministry to which you're called. It's at those times I think we have to dig down deep and remember the call that God has on our life to reconnect with that call and to indeed uh, thank God for that call and to understand that call even more fully. Because there will be those difficult times and how to indeed work through those times and hold on to that call so that we might be the disciple and uh, pastor that God is calling us to even in those difficult times. I think a second thing I would share with them is that something that I learned early on in my journey of ministry. Most people don't care about how smart we are or how much we know. All they really want to know is if we love them and care for them as we journey with them, uh, as, as we serve with them as their pastor. Sometimes people will indeed begin to uh, recognize our gifts and graces much more readily if they know that we love and care for them. And finally, I would encourage them to remember that uh, the ministry to which we're called is not about us, it's about God, about what God is doing in us and through us, what God is doing so that we can indeed be fruitful and faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, so that we might give God all honor, glory, and praise each and every day as one of His dear children and disciples as we serve Him faithfully and fruitfully. Uh, I think that uh, for me, one of the favorite memorable moments in ministry was when I had the opportunity and was invited to bring a message on the Sea of Galilee in the year 2006. I was there with a, a new ordinance from both the Northwest Texas Annual Conference and New Mexico Annual Conferences on the uh, trip that uh, Bishop Whitfield uh, led. And so I was blessed to do that. And why that was so special was, is because in 1995, Barbara, my wife, and I had the opportunity to go to Israel with Bishop Norris, with 240 other United Methodists from this Episcopal area and some others. And while we were on the Sea of Galilee in a boat there as well, Bishop Norris challenged us at the end of his message to go back and make the world a better place. And so I knew as I was working as a geologist in the oil business at that time that I would go back and life would be a little bit different. And so, and that's exactly what happened because within a year and a half of getting back after that trip in 1995, I was uh, entering Perkins School of Theology, having yielded to God's call on my life uh, to be a pastor in the United Methodist Church. And so, yeah, that was a very incredibly special moment in my journey of ministry because as I sat there in 1995 on the boat in the middle of the Sea of Galilee, I would have never imagined in a million years that I would have been able to come back and deliver a sermon or a meditation on the Sea of Galilee as a United Methodist pastor. Galatians 5, 22 through 23a, and that is when the Apostle Paul states, in contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I'm reminded daily in the difficult times, in the joyous times, in the, in the daily journey of ministry, that we're each called to indeed live our lives in such a way that we reflect and uh, represent the fruit of the Spirit as Holy Spirit-filled children of God. So I give thanks that I'm able to indeed continue to live and grow into that as I indeed uh, give bear witness to the fruit of the Spirit in my life daily as one of Christ's disciples. Barbara and I have been blessed to be in ministry in the Northwest Tennessee Conference these last 19 years, and we look forward to what God will be indeed uh, laying before us as we begin a new journey and a new chapter in our journey of ministry uh, as his dear children and disciples. Uh, we appreciate all the churches we've served with and the district I've served in for the last eight years, and also appreciate the opportunity to have served in the New Mexico Annual Conference for seven years as well. 
Uh, we just look forward to hearing about great things and need participating in some of those great things that the Northwest Texas Conference will be doing into the future as they, as the churches and the pastors and the disciples of Christ, uh, continue to indeed respond to God's call on each of our lives to indeed uh, engage the mission fields to which God calls us and to share the love of Christ in such a way that others know who's and who we are. May the Lord continue to bless the Northwest Texas Annual Conference as it continues in its journey of ministry. And we look forward to being in our new home here in Lubbock, Texas, here beginning July the 1st. Blessings on each of you. And thank you again for your support and the ministry to which God calls you as you continue to live and serve as his dear children and disciples.